before I go into it, just as a quick introductory overview of this verse and, and the next two verses, um, the dialogue is still continuing between, not between the Prophet and the Christians, but generally the Quran is addressing the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, as well as, as, well as addressing the polytheists, the mushrikeen of Mecca. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear that Ibrahim alayhi salam was neither a Jew or a Christian. And that the connection of Ibrahim alayhi salam is with the Muslims. As in, it's, his connection is with Islam. His connection is with the Sharia, with the method and the manhaj and the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. This is the connection of Ibrahim alayhi salam with Islam. We know that the Hajj was instituted by whom? Ibrahim alayhi salam. The pillar of Islam, Hajj, was instituted through Ibrahim alayhi salam. The first house that was built for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth was built by, was the Kaaba. Was the Kaaba. Built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that Ibrahim alayhi salam is praised as being on a path, on a way which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Hanifa or Hanifiyyah which we've explained in Surah Al-Baqarah before that it means the one who is constantly turning, inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the truth, towards the straight path always turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turning away from all other things apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the connection of Ibrahim alayhi salam to Islam and to the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. We've said previously that in the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is not commanded to follow anybody. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is not commanded to follow anybody except the Millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is commanded to follow the milla, the way or the uh, method of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is the only messenger that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is commanded to follow. No other messengers is he commanded to follow. As you know, he is the imam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is the imam of all of the messengers. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, follow the milla of Ibrahim to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Because there's a very special connection with Muslims, with Islam, with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. First of all, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from his lineage. He's from his lineage, lineage of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam through Ismail Alayhi Salam. That's well known. Secondly, Ibrahim Alayhi Salam made the dua in Surah Al-Baqarah. This dua is mentioned that, oh Allah, send amongst them a messenger who will recite unto them your signs and who will teach them the kitab and the hikmah. Yeah, he will teach them the kitab and the hikmah and purify them. This is a dua Ibrahim alayhi salam made for this ummah. He made for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi to be sent to this ummah from amongst his descendants. So there's a very important strong connection with Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his ummah. This is established very, very clearly in the Qur'an. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he is the representative of Tawheed, of how to sacrifice for the sake of Tawheed. Ibrahim alayhi salam was sent at a time when shirk was dominant in society. In his society, polytheism, the worship of idols, bowing down to idols, obeying and sacrificing for idols other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was the dominant problem in society. And Ibrahim alayhi salam stood against that even though it was in his own household. He was brought up and raised in the middle of this. He was surrounded by it. The dominant culture of the time was shirk, was associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Ibrahim alayhi salam rose above that in such a strong way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him an imam for 
mankind. Allah said he made him imam. He made Ibrahim alayhi salam an imam for mankind. And he made him a model, a role model to follow. And many, many verses we've discovered, uh, discussed in Surah Al-Baqarah about the praiseworthy qualities of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You know, whoever doesn't follow, whoever rejects his way is foolish and ignorant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also praises Ibrahim alayhi salam for, the, for he, he submitted and surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He submitted and surrendered. And we know Ibrahim alayhi salam made the dua with his son, O oh Allah, make us of the Muslims. Make us, meaning him and his son, from amongst the Muslims, those who surrender and submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, to, and he made a dua for Allah to show him the, the rituals that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sacrifice that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the Hajj, Eid al Adha, the sacrifice, one of the two celebrations instituted in Islam is Eid al Fitr after Ramadan and Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha is the Eid of sacrifice in Hajj, the Eid of Hajj. This is purely on the following on the method and, and the command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's to commemorate. And remember the sacrifice Ibrahim salam was willing to make for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was willing to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sacrificing his beloved son. With that command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to sacrifice his son as a test. Of course Allah did not allow him to sacrifice it. It was simply a test to show Ibrahim salam that your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your love for obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be above everything, has to be above the most beloved thing you have. And Ibrahim alayhi salam passed that test. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is a very powerful role model, a very powerful figure in the Quran, in Islam. And is very connected to our worship and our rituals and our practices is very connected. Ibrahim alayhi salam, even now you, you prayed salah, you made dua in tashahud for who? Prophet Muhammad salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Five times a day, millions and millions of Muslims make dua, send salutations on Muhammad salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Every salah. So we have a very close connection with Ibrahim alayhi salam and we are commanded to follow his way. The reason being, the re main reason being is that Ibrahim alayhi salam presented or represented pure tawheed. What does it mean to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone? What does it mean to purify your intention? What does it mean to submit and surrender and sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ibrahim alayhi salam was the living example of this. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him so much. Ibrahim alayhi salam is, what's his title? Khalil. Khalil. The friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. What a title, what a status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him so much for his sacrifice and his tawheed. Allah loves this. Allah's main you know, as I said last week, his main purpose of sending messengers is to bring people to Tawheed, to the worship of one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To purify our lives, to purify our worship, our ibadah, to make it solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is the best representative of this. Hence the close connection with Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we've covered this, we won't go too much more listing all the connections, but we've covered this before in previous verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this ayah, number uh, 67. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Ibrahim alayhi salam was neither a Jew nor a Christian. 
But he was what? وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا He submitted in all uprightness. This doesn't quite convey the meaning, but yes, he submitted. He was a Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits, one who surrenders. Aslama. He submitted, he surrendered. And Hanifa. As I mentioned, Hanifa is the one who is constantly inclining, moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, moving towards Tawheed, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the truth. And away from all other partners, all other things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not a polytheist. He was not from amongst the polytheists. Even though he was born into society, dominated the prevalent culture at the time, was polytheism. The, pro the dominant religion of the time was polytheism and shirk. And he was born right in the center of that society and even in his family. So this ayah kind of represents a summary of some of the previous ayahs that were indicating that neither the Jews or the Christians are on the Hanifiyyah way. They're not, neither the Jews or the Christians who claim to be, who claim Ibrahim as the patriarch, as the father of these, both these religions. But the previous ayahs, that they were already indicating that neither the Jews or the Christians are on this Hanifiyyah way, Hanifiyyah way of Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? And also that Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, they didn't explicitly claim that they were following the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In, it's not in the Old Testament or New Testament in a significant way that these books or this method or this manhaj or this sharia is on the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's not the path of the Christians or the Jews. And Ibrahim himself, who came later after them, who, who came, uh, sorry, the Jews and the Christians who came later after Ibrahim alayhi salam, he, he was clearly not on their path because they came later. Sorry, could I ask the, just to control the children a little bit? Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair. We welcome children to the masjid, of course. But uh, in a dars, there must be a little bit of control, inshallah. Please. Um, so this ayah or previous ayahs were already indicating that the Jews and the Christians cannot be on the Hanifiya path when their books don't really obligate this kind of connection. And Ibrahim alayhi was not on the path of the Jews or the Christians because he came before them. So. This is the first point. The second point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes here is that, you know, one of the things about the rhetorical eloquence of the Qur'an is its linguistic style, is its way it expresses things, the accuracy of its meanings and expressions. So here as well in this ayah, you know, when, when, when you want to define something or describe something, you need to be what they say in Arabic, jami' and mani'. It means your definition needs to describe all the features you want to describe. If somebody said to you, define a chair, you define it with the features that are contained in the chair, right? You, you try not to leave anything else out, out of it. Mani' means you exclude other things that do not belong to that definition. So it's jami' and mani'. It's, it's contains all the features of what you are describing and it excludes those features that do not belong to what you are describing. And this is an example in this ayah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what in this ayah? First, he, did not, he excludes. He says, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُدِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا He excludes the possibility that Ibrahim alayhislam was either a Jew or a Christian. So this is the exclusion in the definition. He's excluding this possibility. Then he affirms, he describes his real feature. What was he then? He wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a Jew. What was he then? He was Hanifam Muslim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming, now first excluding, he's not a Jew or a Christian. Now affirming, but he was Hanifam Muslim. He was upright, always inclining towards the truth always inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and muslima he was submitting and surrender surrendering to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and then the third part of the ayah again negates emphatically it negates that he was a mushrik it negates the fact the claim that he was a mushrik because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So this definition of Ibrahim السلام, in three parts he was neither a Christian or a Jew so that's excluded he was a Muslim Hanif he was upright always inclining to the truth and surrendering submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lastly a negation that he was not from the polytheist he was not somebody who associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this way, the first negation, this is the definition of or description of Ibrahim alayhi which does not allow anybody else to claim anything about him in terms of belonging to this religion or that religion or this being the father of this religion or that religion. And the way it does that, the first negation cuts off all possibilities and hopes of Jews and Christians, of them including Ibrahim السلام, in their religion, to say he's part of our religion. No, it's very clear, he was neither a Jew or a Christian. The second one negates, the second one as in the last part, وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ This negates the possibility of the Meccan polytheists, the Mushrikun of Mecca, of them claiming to be on the religion of Ibrahim السلام, because they know Ibrahim السلام, they've lost the real message, the authentic message but they have some kind of stories um, um, traditions of Ibrahim السلام, surviving they identify the Kaaba with Ibrahim السلام, but yet they are placing idols in the Kaaba and they were worshipping those idols and they still want to claim some connection with Ibrahim السلام, and to the extent that when Muhammad السلام, claimed that connection they too said we are connected to Ibrahim السلام, before you so this negation here وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ it negates the claims of the polytheists so in one verse the Jews, the Christians and the polytheists are all excluded from claiming belonging to Ibrahim السلام, right? so this is you know, very clear here. The connections and similarities to Ibrahim alayhi salam and our Prophet is everywhere in the Quran. This is what the Quran wants to establish that the Prophet Muhammad, salam, he is closest, he is connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Not the Jews, not the Christians, not the polytheists. If you see, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says earlier we covered in verse 20. فَإِنْ حَاجُّوكَ فَقُلْ أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam If they argue with you, say I have submitted أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ I have surrendered my face, meaning my whole, whole self to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who else says this? Ibrahim alayhi salam In the Quran it says إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ This is the saying of Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's the same expression. He says, I have turned my face, my whole being, to the one who has originated, created the heavens and the earth. It's the same, same expression. And um, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he announced that all submission and surrender, ubudiyah, is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he distanced himself from shirk, from the mushrikeen, from the idols. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam in the Quran he says, he says, وَلَا أَخَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ إِلَّا أَيَّ شَاءَ رَبِّ شَيْئَا I'm not, I, I do not fear, fear what you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam is speaking to the mushrikeen. He says, I do not fear what you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except if Allah wants something like for me to fear or some, something bad to happen to me. But I don't fear what you associate with him. Meaning they have no power. Your idols cannot harm me. 
And he, you know, Ibrahim as I mentioned earlier, he said that Rabbana waj'alna muslimayn lak. You know, make us both Muslims for your sake, surrendering to you. And this is so similar to what the Prophet is commanded to do, to submit, to surrender, to be away from shirk, to reject the policies of Mecca. It's very, very similar. Also, Ibrahim Islam, he smashed the idols with his own hands. He smashed the idols that his father's business was, was actually producing and making, and his community were worshipping. He smashed the idols with his own hands. Who else did this? Muhammad Wasallam. When the Muslims went back to, the, to Mecca and entered Kaaba, the idols were smashed. The idols that were in the Kaaba. So it's a very similar, can you see the parallels? Very similar. Smashing, cleansing the, the land of Tawheed from shirk, from associating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from uh, the worship of idols. And Ibrahim alayhi salam recognized the Tawheed is not just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, but is to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything. Ibrahim alayhi salam said that, you know, the one who created me, فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ The one who created me, he is the one who guides me. وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي And the one who feeds me, وَيُسْقِينَ and the one who gives me to drink, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And when I am sick, he heals me, he cures me. And, where, uh, and the one who brings death to me, and then he brings me back to life. ثُمَّ يَحِينَ So Ibrahim Islam's Tawheed is a full, complete understanding of Tawheed. That when I'm ill, this is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the medicine that cures me. It's the medicine is a means, it's a sabab. But the cause is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The source is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shifa, the healing comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same food, drink, these are causes. You earn, you purchase, you cook and you eat. But the one who is truly feeding you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he doesn't put any intermediaries in between. He, say, he says, the one who created me, guides me. The one who feeds me. The one who gives me to drink. The one who cures me when I'm ill. It's all directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Tawheed. To know that there is no other causes apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no other source of any event except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the same as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the next verse. إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِإِبْرَاهِيمَ لَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ وَهَذَا النَّبِيُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, those who have the best claim to Ibrahim alayhi salam are his followers, this prophet and the believers. And Allah is the guardian of those who believe. So those who are closest, who have a claim to be connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam, awla, they said, comes from the word wali, the one who is a friend or protected or the guardian. But here it means the one who's closest, the one who has uh, the right to claim connectedness, closeness to Ibrahim alayhi salam, are who? Three types of people. One are his followers. The followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam, those who followed him from amongst his family and his descendants and his community, those who followed him. Then who? This Prophet, Hadan Nabi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He has the closest claim. And the believers, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they are closer in their claim and right to claim connectedness and closeness and have a right to claim Ibrahim alayhi wa as one of their own. Why, why do they have this? In which way do they have this? Because they adopt the fundamentals of the Sharia that Ibrahim alayhi came, came with. Because they follow his method. Because they acknowledge 
his status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because they remember him, as I mentioned, we remember Ibrahim alayhi salam in, when we do salutations on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in tashahud, in the salah. We also send salutations on Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family. Same, in the same dua, in the same uh, sitting, we do this. So we are the ones who make dhikr and remembrance and, and send dua and blessings for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And whilst, you know, we do this, the believers do this, whilst the mushriks, they oppose the teachings and tawheed of Ibrahim alayhi salam by associating partners, by creating idols, worshipping idols. And the people of the book, they have forgotten his sharia, his way, his mention. They have forgotten that. So this is the way in which the, the followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and the Muslims, the believers, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, have a closer claim, have a right over Ibrahim alayhi salam. To, be, to claim that his, we are following his manhaj, his method, his milla, his way. The believers have a writer, a, a bigger claim and a right of claim over anybody else. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَدَّتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَوْ يُضِلُّونَكُمْ وَمَا يُضِلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ some of the people of the book wish to mislead you, i.e. the believers, wish to mislead the believers. They mislead none but themselves, yet they fail to perceive it. You know, when you make a claim of truth, when you stand up for the truth, when you propagate the truth, when you announce the truth, people react in different ways. A group of people will accept your claim, will follow you, will accept the truth, etc. There'll be other people, they are neither here or there. They, they neither oppose you, neither follow you. But there's another group who will want harm for you. They will be jealous, they'll be envious. They'll have, they'll have hatred for you. And they will wish that they could misguide you. Not only the, you know, do they have envy and jealousy, they wish they could misguide you as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this about some of the people at the time of the Prophet from the Ahlul Kitab that they wish they could misguide them. How would they misguide them? By saying, you know, accept Christianity, accept Judaism, follow our way. That is the truth. We are closer to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they mislead none but themselves. Why does he say that? Because the one who attempts to mislead somebody else is, of course, he himself is mis misled, misguided. Because otherwise, why would they want to misguide somebody else? He himself is already misguided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this harms nobody except for the person who tries and attempts to misguide. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they, they don't perceive this fact that they are misguided and they're trying to misguide others. They don't perceive it as it says also in Surah Al-Baqarah. So in summary, these two, three verses establish the connection, the close connection of Islam, of Muhammad Wasallam, of the final messenger, of the final Sharia, with that of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam builds the first house of worship for mankind, as it says in the Quran. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cleanses and re-establishes the very same house as the final, last house of worship of Tawheed for mankind until the Day of Judgment. So this is a clear connection with Islam, with Muhammad Sallallahu with Ibrahim Alayhi and of course the connections I mentioned. And therefore, our practices are full of practices of Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. Practices of Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, our practices from the sacrifice on the day of Eid, the whole reason is to commemorate the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi The Hajj itself is something that was instituted by, through Ibrahim alayhi and so forth, Tawheed and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being people of sacrifice, this was the Sahaba, 
This was the Prophet ﷺ sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Placing the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above the love of dunya and possessions and material goods and family and, and, and close ones, etc. So therefore, because of these reasons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that Ibrahim alayhi salam was neither Jew or Christian and they don't have more right to claim following or connection to Ibrahim alayhi salam but the believers have the right. Muhammad alayhi salam has a greater right. The believers and the followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam have a greater right to him than anybody else. So, Jazakumullah khairan, we'll stop here today inshallah. Um, if there's any questions, we'll take a uh, couple of questions. Yes. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Shall I, shall I just answer that one first? Uh, okay, the question is, did Ibrahim Aysam establish Islam and Hajj, or was it something already previously there, and he simply revived it? With regards to Islam, definitely it's something that was already there. Islam, in, when we say Islam, we mean belief in Allah, the basic, the fundamental, the usul, if you like, the usul of Islam. Um, belief in one God, day of judgment, the angels, the hereafter, etc. That was already there from Adam alayhi salam onwards. It's, it's the same message, Tawheed. All the messengers came with that, so he didn't establish that. However, he, he is mentioned in the Quran as with the name of Muslim, he's more prominent with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Like, make us of the Muslims, you know, he was the one who submitted, etc. This is very connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. However, we believe all of the prophets were Muslim in the sense that they all submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of the Hajj, I believe he was the first to command mankind to Hajj um, because the, the house, the Kaaba, is the first house instituted for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mankind. So therefore, indication is, I'm not 100% sure, but the indication would be that there wasn't Hajj before Ibrahim alayhi salam, and the Kaaba was built by him for the first time. That's the indication. I haven't found anything that says previous prophets knew the Kaaba or something like that. I haven't come across. Unless you've come across anything. Yeah, I've come, I've come across that, but I don't know the strength, that's the problem, the strength of that, yeah. The second question is, when Allah refers to Christians and the Jews, mm. when the Quran was revealed, there were many sects of, of Christians, Unitarians, Trinitarians, those who believed in certain books that others did not believe in. Mm -hmm. Generally, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to um, the Christians and the Jews, first of all, the immediate address is to the Jews and Christians of Medina, of the Hijaz, of around Medina, outside of Medina, that came in contact with the Prophet the, the Christians from Yemen and places like that. That's the immediate address. However, it includes, it would include, if it's not something specifically spoken about certain tribes that did X, Y, and Z in relation to the Prophet ﷺ. If it's not a specific e event or incident, when it's talking generally, it will include all of them, unless they don't fit into that category. For example, if there's a sect of Christians, which there is or there was, um, and, and even today there are, who, who do not claim Jesus as Son of God. So obviously the, the claim of Christians being... Um, 
making partners with Allah would not apply to that sect. So yes, it's generally, first of all, first application is to the people of the book that were present at the time. Secondly, is general encompasses everybody unless that particular sect, their beliefs doesn't fit into whatever is being said. Yeah. Do you mean like if there's if if something's found in in the Sharia of Ibrahim alayhi salam, we can follow that if there's no contradiction? That's generally the rule, which not all scholars agree. There's something called in Usul of Fiqh, Shar'u man qablana, the Sharia of those who came before us. So in Usul of Fiqh, um, some of the schools take that as a Sharia, and they say you can follow. If something is mentioned in the Qur'an from the Sharia of the people of the past, Muslims can follow that as long as there's no other dalil to oppose it. Muslims can follow that. And it's a valid source of Sharia. But it's mukhtalafi, it's differed over, it's not agreed upon. It's not agreed upon. But that's not just uh, Sharia of Ibrahim Islam. it's all the Sharias that are mentioned in the Qur'an. Okay. Any other questions? No? Quick announcement, those who are on the group probably have seen it. Inshallah, we'll uh, now go for, uh, what's the name of the place? Patisserie. We're just going for a quick social tea, coffee. You're all invited to join us just next door on Whitechapel Road. Patisserie, the, the coffee shop just around the corner. You can follow the brothers here, I'll be there as well. So please do come along if you have time. Join us for a tea, coffee, nothing, just an informal chat, social, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. See you all next week, but see you at the coffee shop now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.